Hi, let me introduce you to the influence model. This view and perspective comes from the book Influencer, The Power to Change Anything, and this is the first in a three-part series. The aim, purpose, and objectives are to learn how directing teams can design and implement a person-centered, action-oriented, continual quality improvement effort. We can explore ways to apply organizational and leadership skills to our team improvement efforts and learn how to connect with and engage subject matter experts as innovators and early adopters to become leaders in our efforts to improve our system. This is only going to occur through our changed behaviors. Influencers can improve anything. We know that every change is not an improvement Yet every improvement requires that we change something. And the evidence is that to influence change, we have to decide what we're trying to improve and what changes lead to improvement. The author started with two fundamental questions that people in social systems ask. Can I do what's required and will it be worth it? The answer to these two questions requires methods for managers, leaders, and subject matter experts alike. The agenda outline is we're going to talk briefly about the background of the challenge, an overview of the influencer model, we'll talk about the background on learning and improvement process throughout, and we'll also get into key skills. Most of those key skills will be covered in detail in the third of this series. The challenge for us is that when we're faced with a complex and complicated system, we often find that the leaders, managers, workers, etc. hold the problem in place as the status quo because it's so messy and it feels like it's not possible to change and improve it. The prevailing system of management views don't work. Protecting our job, our team, my turf, my processes, my whatever are simply not ever effective. Sometimes we blame the people, the management, the executives, the board, etc., sometimes even the customers. And culture change or just change programs don't solve it. Neither do re-engineering, reorganizations, restructuring, or the latest fad. The notion that I can't change the system has a problem there, and that is that if you assume that you can't change the system, you're never going to change the system. I think of the Henry Ford quote, that the only thing that I know is impossible is that which I do not try. In our case, we found that there are proven ways to influence improvement. The authors have described a number of ways in their book. I encourage you to get a copy and read it. But I have personal experience with the influencer model, and it really does work in practice. Behavior, skill, will, and influence are all part of this model. We know that we need improved behaviors. What words we say and what actions we take have a huge influence. We have skills that we can learn. An ability to perform our actions that are required in our work help us determine the results with good execution and often within a given amount of time. It leads us to success. Will, as a comparison, is as generally how we select, decide, and choose from among the choices through understood and reasoned behaviors in a deliberate action. And this idea of the level of influence is we have something that we can do to improve something in an indirect but important way. When we influence behavior in a system, we influence that person or system that we think of as a key participant. In the model, there's three key areas to influence our systems. We mentioned motivation and ability in terms of will and skill. And the levels of influence that the authors describe are both personal and social as well as structural. We're going to talk more about each of these. But there are three key areas that influence these systems that we work in. First, we want to focus and measure, we want to find vital behaviors, and we want to engage all six sources of influence. We're going to 
start with focus and measure and we're going to talk about how we focus and measure through system or balancing measures that are an intersection of outcome and processes to make sure that process improvements don't suboptimize the whole process. We also talk about outcome measures. These are the values that are why our customers do business with us. It's what they expect for the price they pay. Process measures, on the other hand, are a measurement of the means, not the ends. They're the means by which we deliver the desired effects and values to the customer by the teams that work in processes throughout the organization. They serve the customers, the beneficiaries, and other stakeholders in the system, including the employees themselves. So with respect to these three key areas, let's talk about finding vital behaviors next. The vital behaviors are teamwork. We need to think of this team as a system and the higher organization as a team and a system and the overarching system of stakeholders is in essence the community that our business is connected to, whether we're in government, industry, or education. A process focus means that we look at how multiple processes make up the system that we want to influence. Continual quality improvement as a strategy is a vital behavior. It provides methods to use the plan, do, study, act cycle and demonstrate the evidence of actual improvement, not just change, but actual improvement. And spreading improvement is a vital behavior because it helps us engage with innovators and early adopters to then further engage the stakeholders in the system. These six sources of influence in our system are important for us to understand. We're going to review that making the desirable out of the undesirable is the first source of influence. Surpassing personal limits for leaders, managers, and subject matter experts at every level is part of it, as well as harnessing peer pressure, finding strength in numbers, demanding responsibility and designing rewards as well as changing the structure of the environment are all important sources of influence. We'll cover those in detail in the next part of this series, part two. I want to thank you for your kind attention. We're doing our best to keep these video updates under 10 minutes and we want to make sure that you have a paper copy of this. If you have questions about the paper copy or the video, please give me a call or send me an email as noted here. Thank you.